welcome to lab 7 part 1 where we will cover sympy's interpolate function and scipy's interp 1d function. For this video we will use the following data points as an example. To get started we will set our data points equal to our data variable and run that. Now we will start with sympy's interpolating polynomial function. Let's first import sympy as sp. Sympy's interpolate function will return a polynomial with respect to a symbol. So our first step is declaring our symbol x equal to sympy.symbols and x. Now we can go ahead and call the function and set it equal to yip. The function is sympy.interpolate with the inputs of data, comma, and the symbol x. Note that data must be in this format. Now let's go ahead and display yip. Interpolate returns a sympy expression in terms of the symbol x. To get a numeric value, we must use the subs function, curly brackets, and substitute a variable for x. Let's say 3. Moving on to scipy's spline interpolation function, which is different from sympy's interpolate function in that it returns a piecewise function instead of a polynomial. For this function, we must separate data into its x and y values, and we also have four different kinds, which are zero, linear, quadratic, and cubic. To start, we will only import this function from scipy using from scipy.interpolate import interp1d. Our next step is to separate data into its x and y values. So data x will be equal to a list comprehension. Then for point in data allows us to loop through each of the points in our data. From each point we wish to extract the x value at index 0. The same applies for data y. In this case we wish to extract the value at index 1 for point in data. Now we can call our function interp1d and first pass in data x followed by data y and then the type of spline using kind equal to a string. The first kind will be 0 and we will set that equal to y0. Let's copy this three times. For the second kind the only changes will be the variable name and the kind parameter. In this case we will use linear. Likewise for quadratic, we will set y2 equal to quadratic. And finally for cubic, will be y3 equal to cubic. Now let's take a look at what interp1d returns. Here you can see it returns a scipy object. In order to use it, we will call it like any other Python function. So round brackets and then the value for x. Let's say 0. Now that we have called our interpolation functions, we will now plot the results. To do that, we will need numpy as np as well as matplotlib as plt. We will first plot sympy's polynomial. First, we will declare the x values of our plot using numpy.a range between the ranges of negative 1 and 1 with a step size of 0.01. Then our y values will be equal to a list comprehension and we will substitute each of our x values into our sympy expression. To do that we will call our polynomial yip.subs and we will substitute the symbol x with the value of i for i in x values. Now we will plot our data points as a scatter plot. We will first copy data x and data y from below. And then call plt.scatter and pass in data x and data y. Now we will plot our yip polynomial using plt.plot, pass in our x values and our y values, then call plot.show. From this graph, you can see a big disadvantage of using interpolating polynomials is that it fluctuates a lot from the data points. Now to plot our scipy graphs, we will first plot the data points as a scatter plot like before using data underscore x and data underscore y. 
And like before, we need our x values equal to numpy dot a range between negative 1 and 1 with a step size of 0 0.01. To plot y0, we can use plt dot plot x values comma y0 round brackets. And we can pass the list of x values directly in. Then we will give it a title of 0 and then call plot dot show. And here you can see our y0 graph which is made up of piecewise functions. We can now copy and paste this code, and we will use the same x values for all the plots. The only change here is y0 to y1, and the title from 0 to linear. And do this for the last two graphs. So then we need y2, which is quadratic, and y3, which is cubic. So here you can see all of our graphs, which are made of piecewise functions, and you can see how we go from a very linear graph to a much more smoothed out graph.